For centuries, people have been captivated by extinct animals, with dinosaurs, especially the massive, non-bird ones, stealing much of the spotlight due to their incredible size and fearsome appearance. One of the biggest debates in paleontology revolves around which carnivorous dinosaur was the largest to ever walk the Earth. However, when it comes to land-dwelling mammal predators, far less attention has been given to their size. This could be because mammals still exist today, or because none ever reached the towering proportions of the dinosaurs. When discussions about enormous extinct mammalian predators do arise, one name almost always comes up first, Andrew Zarkas. It has long been considered the biggest and most powerful land predator among mammals. But surprisingly, evidence suggests that another, less famous creature might have been even larger, Arctotherium. While the true size of Arctotherium has only been properly understood in recent years, the existence of this giant bear-like animal has been known for quite some time. Fossils of this prehistoric predator were first uncovered in Argentina over 170 years ago. The initial discovery wasn't the biggest specimen, but it was still impressive enough to grab the attention of scientists. What made this find even more remarkable was the excellent preservation of the bones, which allowed researchers to quickly identify it as a new type of bear. Because of its massive and powerful build, it was named Arctotherium, meaning bear beast. Additionally, it was given the species name Bonaerensi, as a reference to the city where it was originally found. The remarkable condition of Arctotherium's bones didn't just help scientists identify it as a type of bear, it also allowed them to classify it within a specific branch of the bear family, Tremarctinae. This classification was made possible thanks to its distinct skull shape. Unlike other bears, its skull had an unusually deep structure, creating the illusion of being shorter than it actually was. This unique trait is found in all members of the Tremarctinae group, earning them the nickname short-faced bears. Today, scientists recognize four different genera within this group, but only one still exists, the spectacled bear. However, when most people hear about Tremarctinae, they don't think of the surviving species. Instead, the most famous member of this group is Arctotus, a massive extinct bear often considered one of the largest carnivorous mammals to ever roam the planet. And it truly was gigantic. The largest males weighed around 2,100 pounds, 950 kilograms, putting them on par with the biggest polar bears ever recorded. For comparison, Androsarchus, another well-known extinct predator, is believed to have weighed just under one ton. At first, Arctodus was even larger than Arctotherium bonarensa, which had a maximum estimated weight of about 1,100 pounds, 500 kilograms. But this size gap didn't remain forever. As time passed and more fossils were discovered, paleontologists realized that Arctotherium wasn't just a single species. It was a whole group of massive bears. Today, five species of Arctotherium are recognized. A. Angustidens, A. Bonarense, A. Terigense, A. Vetustum, and A. Wingae. While these species differed in their time periods and tooth structure, the most striking variation among them was their size. One species, in particular, stood out as the true giant of the group. Arctotherium angustidens. Among all Arctotherium species, A. angustidens is by far the most famous, and for good reason. This prehistoric bear was an absolute giant, possibly unlike anything seen before in the world of mammals. Initially, paleontologists estimated that this species weighed between 910 and 2,600 pounds, 410 to 1,200 kilograms. While that put it among the largest bears in history, it wasn't quite big enough to claim the title of the largest land-dwelling mammalian predator. However, short-faced bears, including the only surviving member of the group, the spectacled bear, are known for their extreme size differences between individuals, especially between males and females. In some cases, males can be up to 50% larger than females. This pattern also applied to Arctotherium, and over time, paleontologists uncovered the remains 
of enormous male A. angustidens individuals. These discoveries gradually pushed the limits of how large a land-dwelling mammalian predator could be. The most astonishing breakthrough came in 2011, when researchers in Buenos Aires unearthed a specimen that left the scientific community in awe. This particular bear had massive limb bones. Its humerus, radius, and ulna were so large that experts estimated its weight to be a staggering 4,500 pounds, 2,040 kilograms, meaning it surpassed two tons. At this size, Arctotherium angustidens would have been heavier than some well-known theropod dinosaurs, including an average adult Allosaurus, and three times the weight of the largest Ceratosaurus ever found. The paleontologist responsible for the weight estimate was cautious about this number, suggesting that a more reasonable estimate for this prehistoric giant would be around 3,600 pounds, 1,760 kilograms. Even at this weight, it still ranked among the largest carnivorous mammals to ever walk the Earth. If these size estimates are correct, Arctotherium angustidens would still surpass any land-dwelling mammalian predator alive today. It would have even outweighed Barinosuchus, an extinct reptile from the Sebacid family. This is a remarkable fact, because Barinosuchus is widely regarded as the largest terrestrial predator to emerge after the dinosaurs went extinct. Due to its sheer size and power, scientists began calling it the Giant Short-Faced Bear, a nickname it now shares with Arctotus simus, another colossal bear from the Ice Age. But what allowed Arctotherium to grow so enormous? Experts believe its gigantism resulted from major ecological changes. One key factor may have been the extinction of Chapalmotherium, an omnivorous mammal that had a diet similar to modern bears, particularly the spectacled bear. With Chapalmotherium gone, Arctotherium may have faced far less competition for food. This could have allowed it to rapidly increase in size, securing its position as the dominant predator of its time during the early Pliocene and early Pleistocene. With this advantage, Arctotherium rose to the top of the food chain, becoming a predator capable of taking down some of the largest animals of its time. Carbon isotope analysis of its remains reveals that it had a diet rich in meat with a strong preference for large prey. Its menu likely included horses, tapirs, camelids, macroconids, glyptodonts, giant ground sloths, toxodontids, and even gomphotheries, massive relatives of modern elephants. This evidence suggests that Arctotherium wasn't just a scavenger, but an active hunter of some of the most formidable creatures of the prehistoric world. The evidence of injuries found on these large herbivores, combined with the discovery of cracked and worn teeth in Arctotherium, suggests that it was both an active hunter and a scavenger. It likely used its massive canines to deliver fatal bites to the neck and back of its prey with bone-crushing force. Additionally, its powerful, heavily built forelimbs may have been used to inflict further damage, making it an exceptionally lethal predator. Despite its bulky appearance, Arctotherium angustidens was surprisingly fast. Its long, well-proportioned legs allowed it to reach impressive speeds, possibly exceeding 40 miles, 60 kilometers per hour, on par with a modern grizzly bear, despite being significantly heavier. This speed, combined with its strength, made it an efficient hunter, capable of chasing down even large, swift prey. Its abilities didn't stop there. Arctotherium also had highly developed senses, particularly an excellent sense of smell. Studies of its skull structure suggest that it had a powerful olfactory system, allowing it to detect scents from miles away. This gave it an edge in locating food, whether it was tracking live prey or sniffing out carrion from a great distance. However, this prehistoric bear wasn't just a ruthless predator. Dental analysis indicates that it was actually an omnivore, capable of supplementing its diet with plant-based foods it likely consumed roots, fruits, berries, grasses, and forbs whenever the opportunity presented itself. This adaptability provided yet another advantage over competing predators of its time. Some of these carnivores, like Smilodon, were comparable in size, but none were large enough to pose, a serious threat to a fully grown Arctotherium when alone. Thanks to its sheer size, speed, and versatile diet, 
The giant short-faced bear dominated as the top predator in its territory, ruling over what is now Argentina and possibly extending its range into areas of El Salvador and Bolivia. In the regions where its fossils have been found, Arctotherium and Gustadins seemed to favor open plains, but was also known to venture into forested areas. It wasn't restricted to just one type of habitat, showing an ability to adapt to different environments. Interestingly, rare discoveries suggest that this massive bear may have sometimes taken shelter in paleo burrows, large underground tunnels. Multiple remains have been found within these burrows, leading scientists to theorize that Arctotherium may have lived in family groups rather than being entirely solitary. However, despite its apparent use of burrows, researchers don't believe it actually dug them. Instead, Arctotherium was more of a burrow conqueror, taking over dens originally excavated by xenothrens, such as giant armadillo-like creatures. In fact, burrow takeovers seem to have been so common the paleontologists suspect Arctotherium played a direct role in the dramatic increase in paleoburrow numbers during the early Pleistocene. The constant territorial struggles forced xenarthrins to repeatedly abandon their tunnels and dig new ones, assuming they weren't killed in the process. These battles were anything but minor scuffles. They were often brutal, leaving deep wounds that had a high chance of infection. However, burrows weren't the only cause of conflict. Fossilized skeletons of adult Arctotherium show significant injuries, suggesting that violent encounters, whether over territory, mates, or dominance, were a regular part of life. Some researchers even propose that the high percentage of cracked teeth seen in Arctotherium could be partially due to these fierce fights with rivals. This harsh, conflict-ridden lifestyle may have contributed to a high mortality rate among adults and younger bears alike. Yet, Despite all these hardships, Arctotherium endured for a long time, proving itself as a dominant force in its environment. What ultimately brought this giant down wasn't its battles with rivals, it was the changing ecosystem itself. As the early Pleistocene came to an end and the middle Pleistocene began, the predator community, known as the Carnivore Guild, became more diverse and competitive. New species entered the ecosystem, each adapting to the changing environment, which made survival increasingly difficult for Arctotherium. At some point, this giant bear stopped increasing in size, and over time, its population began to decline. By 700,000 years ago, Arctotherium angustidens had vanished completely, marking the end of its reign as a colossal predator. This wasn't the end of the Arctotherium lineage. While the giants disappeared, their legacy continued in the form of four smaller, medium-sized species that evolved from them. This shift in size was unexpected, especially considering what was happening in North America. There, Arctotus, the short-faced bear's cousin, continued to grow larger over time, while Arctotherium in South America went in the opposite direction, becoming smaller. Ironically, this size reduction turned out to be an advantage. Unlike Arctotus, which eventually died out, these smaller Arctotherium species survived for thousands of years longer. These four species can be divided into two main groups. One group underwent a drastic change, shifting from a primarily carnivorous diet to a more plant-based one. This group included Arctotherium vetustum and Arctotherium wingi, which were also the smallest species of the genus. Isotope analysis of their bones shows that they specialized in consuming C3 plants such as fruits and leaves. However, occasional spikes in their isotope levels suggest that they still ate meat from time to time. These rare instances of carnivory may have involved scavenging or even hunting certain prey, such as ground sloths, Nothrotherium. There is also some speculation that they may have engaged in cannibalism under certain conditions. This shift toward a more plant-based diet is believed to have been a direct response to their northern range where they encountered intense competition from powerful carnivores that arrived during the Great American Interchange. With so many formidable predators sharing the same habitat, these bears had to adapt by relying more on plant foods to survive. Although becoming mostly herbivorous helped Arctotherium wingay and Arctotherium vetustum avoid direct competition with these large predators, it introduced a new challenge, competition with smaller omnivores. Instead of battling apex predators for meat, 
they now had to contend with a different set of species for access to fruits, roots, and other plant materials. Meanwhile, further south, Arctotherium bonarense and Arctotherium terrigense maintained the carnivorous tendencies of their giant ancestors. Unlike their northern relatives, these two species lived in regions such as Chile and Argentina, where they were less affected by the influx of northern predators from the Great American Interchange. Between the two, A. terrigense was slightly smaller, weighing about 20% less than A. bonarense. However, both species had remarkably similar diets, primarily preying on animals, ranging from 220 to 660 pounds, 100 to 300 kilograms. This means that medium-sized prey, such as camelids and horses, made up a significant part of their diet. Unlike their massive predecessor, A. angustidens, these smaller Arctotherium species weren't the biggest predators in their environment. As a result, they likely engaged in more scavenging and bone consumption to satisfy their need for meat. Instead of taking down the largest prey, they focused on smaller animals and likely left the hunt for adolescent and juvenile megafauna to bigger carnivores, such as giant jaguars and smilodon. In addition to facing challenges from large canids, these smaller Arctotherium species also competed with one another, creating even more pressure within their ecosystems. Despite their reduced size, these bears thrived for an impressive 691,000 years after the extinction of their massive ancestor, Arctotherium angustidens. Their adaptability and varied diets allowed them to survive for a remarkably long time. Even they eventually disappeared. Fossil evidence indicates that all four species went extinct between 12,000 and 9,000 years ago, with Arctotherium wingi being the last to persist, surviving in parts of Venezuela. What makes this extinction particularly puzzling is that all four species vanished around the same time, even though they lived in different regions and had different dietary habits. This raises the question, what exactly led to their downfall? While the precise cause remains uncertain, paleontologists have pointed out that the quaternary extinction event was especially harsh on bears, particularly those with less conventional body structures. Unlike modern bears, Arctotherium had an unusually robust frame and longer limbs, traits that may have made it less adaptable to a rapidly changing environment. As the Ice Age came to an end, these physical traits might have become a disadvantage, ultimately sealing the fate of the once mighty predator. And with that, the era of the largest land-based mammalian predator came to a close. Click on the video on your screen to keep learning more with our content. See you in the next video.